Algebra 2, and of course, assessment review. Day 3, now we're going to look at logarithms. And this is part 2 of the day 3 information. So first of all, let's just review how to rewrite a logarithm. If you look on the left, you'll see the form that a logarithm takes. It's log, and then the subscripted number is the base, and, that, and then the value, and then equals the exponent. <clears throat> and then if you look across to the right, you can see that logarithm in exponential form. So 2 to the third power equals 8. You can also go from exponential to logarithmic form. So go in your pretest to number 4. Let's rewrite that exponential equation 5 to the x power equals 20. So first I'm going to locate my base, which is 5, and then my value, which is 20, my exponent is x, so that's what the logarithm equals. So you can see where I have placed my values in the boxes. But the question asked me to put the letters that correspond with those. So when I am answering this question on an actual test, I would actually put instead of 5, D, instead of 20, B, and then instead of X, A. We can also condense and expand with logarithms. Those are just their properties. So there are three properties, the product, the quotient, and the power property. And you can see both of those with base 10. So if you're multiplying the values, you can expand them with addition. If you're dividing the values, you can expand with subtraction. And if you are raising a value to a power, you can expand that with multiplication. You can also go the other way and condense which is what number seven is asking you to do. So go in your pretest packet to number seven, and let's condense this log expression into a single term using those properties. So the first thing you want to look for is a multiplier out front, and I see three of those. You can rewrite those as powers. You're going to keep the base the same, so you'll have log base three of x squared plus log base three of y cubed minus log base three of z to the fifth. After you've taken care of the multipliers out front, then look at how they've been expanded left to right. So the first two have been added, so we can condense those with multiplication, and then the last term is being subtracted, so we can condense that with subtraction. So you'll have one log base three, and then x squared times y cubed, because those two are multiplied since they're added, and then all divided by z to the fifth. So the choice we're looking for is choice A. Now go back to your notes packet, and let's review how to find an inverse function. So <clears throat> it's the same as other functions. You're going to interchange or switch your x and y variables. You're going to isolate the log or the exponential expression, and then you're going to rewrite in the other form. So if you look at A, that's an exponential equation. So the first thing we're going to do is just switch the x and y's. So we'll have x equals 6 to the y. Then we will rewrite that in log form. So 6 to the y equals x is rewritten logarithm form as log base 6 of x equals y. And then I'm going to replace y with that inverse function notation. If you start with an exponential, the inverse of an exponential is a log equation. Now on b, you're starting with a log equation, so you're going to end up with an exponential. That means your variable x will be in the exponent. So you're going to switch your x and y variables, and then rewrite that in exponential form. So notice I put the log expression on the left. And a natural log is base e, so that would be e to the x power equals y plus 3. And now we'll solve for y, so subtract the 3 over and then replace y with that inverse function notation. So notice we started with the natural log and we end up with an exponential function. <clears throat> this is an extra problem, so go back to your notes packet. What is the inverse function for f of x equals 1 half log base 5 of x? So, same steps. We're going to switch the x and y variable. And then we're going to solve for y. So we'll multiply both sides by 2. We'll get 2x equals log base 5 of y. Notice I've rewritten my log expression on the left because it's, then it's easy to switch it into exponential form. So that will be 5 to the 2x power equals y. Inverse function 
of x equals 5 to the 2x. Or I can break out that 5 to the 2, or the second power, as 25. So the choice we're looking for is D. All right, so we're talking about rewriting and then also the change of base formula. So if you look from left to right, log base of x can be rewritten using another base. In this case, the general form is C. So you do log base C of the value, which is x over log base C of B, which is the base. Or let's put some numbers in there. So log base 3 of 7 is the same as the log of the value, which is 7, divided by log of the base, which is 3. And notice the base we have changed that to is base 10. So to do log base 2 of 15 as change of base, we would do log of the value, which is 15, over log of the base, which is 2. And we have changed that to base 10. You can also, when you do change of base, change to the natural log, base e. So this says, which of the following expressions are solutions to 4 to the x equals 12? So let's rewrite that in log form. So that's log base 4 of 12 equals x. So using change of base, we can do log of 12 over log of 4, and that's changing it to base 10. We could also use the natural log. So that would be ln of 12 over ln of 4. So now we can see our three choices, which are b, d, and e. Now to solve log equations, we can either use method 1, the property of equality. So if we have one log base equal to another, we can just set those values equal to each other. Second method would be to change forms. So go to your notes packet and let's look at these four equations. 4 to the x equals 11. We cannot rewrite 4 and 11 as same base raised to a different power, so we're going to switch it to log form. So that would be log base 4 of 11 equals x, and then I can use the change of base to figure out what that value is. To three decimal places, it would be 1.730. Look at the next equation. Same thing, we can't rewrite 7 and 15 as the same base raised to different powers, so we'll switch to log form, which is log base 7 of 15 equals 9x. Notice to solve for x, after evaluating that log expression, I'm going to need to divide by 9, and I'll get approximately 0.155. For my third equation, it's a, a log equation, and I'm just going to switch forms. So I'm going to rewrite that as 4 to the third power equals 5x minus 1, which is 64 equals 5x minus 1. Solving for x, I get 13. With logarithms, you always want to check your answer. So I'm going to plug in 13 for x, and I get log base 4 of 64 equals 3, and that's true, because 4 to the third power does equal 64. The last equation will work the same way. We're going to switch forms. So 2 to the fifth power equals x minus 6. 32 equals x minus 6, so x equals 38, potentially. Now I'm going to check that by plugging it in. So I'm seeing, does log base 2 of 32 equal 5? Yes, it does. That checks. Now go to your pretest packet, number 23, and let's solve this log equation. So it is just like the one we worked. We can switch it into exponential form. So I can rewrite that as 2 to the fifth power equals 3x minus 1. 32 equals 3x minus 1. I'm going to add my 1. So 33 equals 3x. Now, I don't know if you caught that, but I made a mistake. I took 33 and divided it by 3 and said that was 10. So when I started to check my logarithm, I realized that 10 would not work. So I went back, and now I see that 33 divided by 3 is actually 11. So that is a good strategy in any situation in math, but especially a test like this, is to always check your work if you can, just to see if you made a simple error like I did. So I checked 11, and 11 does work. Just a review on, well, it says condense and expand, but here I have the information 
on how to rewrite a logarithm. But look at number 28 now in your pretest packet. So we're going to look at um, condensing the left side of this equation. Notice we have two logarithms, base 5, that have been um, expanded with addition. So I can condense those by multiplying the values together. So I get log base 5 of 2 times x minus 3. On the right side, I'm going to expand that multiplication by re rewriting that as a power. So 4 squared is 16. Now I can use my method 1 of solving property of equality. I can just set my log values equal to each other because I have two log base 5's equaling. So I'll say 2x minus 6 equals 16. Solving for x, I get 11, but I'm going to check it. So you can see I made a mistake in my check step. I put in 11 um, for the first value of the log, and I should have put in 2. Once I go back and do it correctly, I can see that the left side of the equation does match the right side. So my answer is 11. All right, last problem. Go to number 31 in your pretest packet. So this problem shows up a lot, sound intensity of this formula, loudness. <clears throat> so the formula is L of I, or loudness, equals 10 times the log of the intensity of the sound over the initial intensity. And we will put in 10 to the negative 12 for that value. So we need to find, find rounded to the nearest tenth of the decibel what is the loudness of a musical group that plays with that intensity. So I'm going to plug that number in. It's just in scientific notation, which is okay, um, for i, and then 10 to the negative 12 for i sub 0. Then I'm just going to grab my calculator, and you grab yours, and just do a straight plug-in the way you see it. And you'll see that that will equal about 98.3 decibels. All right, this concludes our day three, algebra two, and of course, assessment review on logarithms. So you can go on to the next video um, on our day four material.